On the afternoon of June 19, 2010, in a small village in Shanxi Province, China, it was as peaceful and harmonious as usual. Because of the hot weather, and there is no work in the field, villagers all gathered outside to enjoy the cool. Miss Liu is cheerfully chatting and laughing with her neighbors. However, she could never imagine that just across the street, in her own house, a great misfortune was falling upon her daughter-in-law and grandson. Daytime is longer in summer. It got dark around eight o'clock. Neighbors came home for dinner one after another. Miss Liu also went back to her home. Usually, her daughter-in-law would have prepared dinner, but when she entered the house that day, it was very quiet. Through the window, she saw her still sleeping in bed. Her daughter-in-law had been married to her family for more than ten years. She was very hardworking and almost never missed a dinner. Today, when it came to dinner time, she was still lying in bed. It's very strange. Miss Liu wanted to check if she was ill. However, when she entered the room, she was shocked by the scene. Her daughter-in-law and grandson were both dead. When the police came, they found that the situation at the scene was much worse than that the emergency call described. The daughter-in-law was killed by some blunt weapon. It was very painful death. Her blood stains were all over the wall. There were signs of struggling and scratches. In another room, Miss Liu's grandson was also strangled to death in bed. According to common sense, the victim should have shouted for help when fighting with the murderer. However, nothing was heard by Miss Liu and her neighbors. According to forensic examination, Miss Liu's daughter-in-law and grandson all died around 5 p.m. During that time. Miss Liu and several neighbors were chit-chatting at the gate of the yard, which is very close to the crime scene, where the mother and son were killed. This courtyard had only one entry. At that time, Miss Liu and her neighbors did not see any outsiders going in and out, except for her grandson from school. How did this murder get in? What's more strange is that the murder killed the two people in a row without making any sound at all. How could this happen? After some investigation, the police learned that on that day of the incident, most villagers were outside to enjoy the cool, and no one saw any stranger entering the village. That is to say, the murderer must be from this very village. Moreover, from the scene, the murderer had a clear goal: that is, to kill Liu's daughter-in-law and grandson. It can be inferred that the murderer must hold some grudge against Miss Liu's family. Otherwise, he would not be so cruel. There's no other clue. As this village is very small, with only more than 300 people, the police thought they could do a one-by-one one inspection. Maybe they would be able to identify the suspect. Just as the case ran into a deadlock, to the police's surprise, Miss Liu Zhang, Wang Qing, came to the captain of the criminal police and said that he knew who the murderer was and gave the name of the murderer directly. Wang Qing said the murderer's name was Ji Lingquan, a man in this village. He said it must be Ji Lingquan who had killed his wife and son. The police immediately took control of Ji Lingquan after some interrogation. Sure enough, Ji Lingquan admitted it. The police learned Wang Qing and Ji Lingquan used to be very good friends who grew up together from childhood. Four years ago, Wang Qing set up a lumber factory in the village. At that time, Ji Lingquan was unemployed and had nothing to do. So Wang Qing asked him to help him in the lumber factory. Wang Qing trusted Ji Lingquan very much. He often offered Ji the most important jobs and paid him the highest salary. Due to their jobs, Wang Qing often went to Ji Lingquan's house and asked him to give advice and help. Ji Lingquan's looks was just average or a bit ugly, but his wife was pretty and spoiled by him. With time went on, Ji Lingquan's wife became fond of Wang Qing. And somehow seduced him to her bed. They started an affair. Soon, things were discovered by Ji Lingquan. Considering years of friendship, and Wang Qing had been a good friend to him, Ji Lingquan just warned Wang Qing to cut bonds with his wife and did not take further actions against him. However, Ji Lingquan vented his anger on his wife and gave her a violent beat. He thought his wife was in the wrong and would feel sorry and bear the punishment willingly. Unexpectedly, after the wife was beaten, she sought to commit suicide. She used a rope, tied to the roof, and hung herself several times. And it was not pretending; she did it for real. 
His wife was clearly in love with Wang Jing, and her will was very strong. And Ji Lingquan felt that there was nothing he could do. People must have felt strange. Why Ji Lingquan did not divorce his wife? It's because to have a wife was very important to him in China. Because of the gender imbalance, especially in rural areas, many people cannot find a wife for life. If her wife died, since he was poor and ugly, he could no longer find any other. And her wife had several brothers. If she died, they would certainly not spare him. He was timid, and he was afraid of her wife's brothers. He must keep her alive and keep this marriage in order to comfort his wife not to commit suicide. He could only acquiesce that his wife. And Wang Qing maintained their sexual relations to make her happy. He even brought Wang Qing back to his house and asked him to continue the sexual relationship with his wife. Wang Qing also confirmed that Ji Lingquan had asked himself to go to his home more than one time to have sex with his wife. He often intercepted me on the road and threatened me to go to his house. He threatens me.、Uh, at first, he enticed me to go to his house. What to do at his house? To have sex with his wife. Later, the situation became more absurd. Ji's mind was distorted by this abnormal relationship. Ji Lingquan, his wife, and Wang Qing had three sons together. These absurd relationships lasted about half a year. Later, Wang Qing felt that he had lost the excitement and felt himself being used as a tool. The experience was not as pleasurable as before. Wang Qing would not play the game anymore, so he broke off the relationship and stopped going to Ji Lingquan's home, which made Ji Lingquan very angry. Afterwards, no matter how Ji Lingquan threatened and lured him, Wang Qing always refused. Wang Qing's indifferent refusal, in Ji Lingquan's view, was a great betrayal and extreme insult to himself. Which is unbearable. He thought Wang Qing might tell others their shameful story someday and make him lose face. He became desperate over time. Finally, one day, he decided to take his revenge by harming or killing Wang Qing. On the afternoon of June nineteenth, while Miss Liu was outside the yard chatting with neighbors, Ji Lingquan sneaked into Wang Qing's house by jumping over the wall. He thought. Wang was taking a nap at home, but he was not there. Only Yan Suojun, Wang Qing's wife, was at home alone watching TV. Ji vented his anger on her. Ji hit her on the head with a heavy metal lampstand found in the house and killed her almost instantly. According to Ji Lingquan, Wang's wife, upon his approaching, tried to call for help, but he immediately covered her mouth, so there was no loud sound during the whole cry. Just when he killed Yan Suojun, Wang Qing's nine years old son came home from school. When her son pushed the door in, he strangled him to death. Now Ji Lingquan was convicted of intentional homicide and prosecuted, locked up in prison. Waiting for him is life imprisonment or death penalty. As we know, China still has it.